It's a great pleasure to welcome to What's Next, David McDonald, who's the co-founder and chief executive officer at Solar Africa. Uh, welcome, welcome to What's Next, David. It's great to have you with us. Good afternoon, Aki. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Listen, it's very topical because, you know, everyone is talking renewable energy. Uh, the COP summit is on at the moment and, you know, we need to do something about climate change. And solar, certainly everyone is talking a little bit about solar, not a little bit, but quite a bit about solar, actually. But uh, before we start, tell us a little bit about Solar Africa, the solutions that your business provides. What do you guys do? Thanks. Um, yeah, so we were founded in, in 2011, um, and essentially we've evolved from a specialist provider of rooftop solar uh, into more of a full service provider of green energy solutions. Um, oh. That we are kind of designed to 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 meet uh, commercial industrial clients' green energy journey over time. Um, so essentially, the the solar component of that is something that we've focused heavily on in, in in the earlier years. But as our as our business has developed, we understand that you know to be able to meet those clients' needs, we've had to broaden broaden our our, our offering. Um, with regards to who we are as a business, um, so our, our, our target market is generally the commercial industrial sector. Um, we've grown significantly over the years. Um, we were heavily focused on finance solutions in the earlier years, specifically PPAs, uh, which is your power purchase agreements, so the non-CAPEX solutions. Um, and over the years, you know, those, those have evolved and have been di dictated by, by the market. Um, we've got 65 uh, permanent staff, um, so we have grown significantly over the, the last couple of years. Um, and to date, we own, operate, um, we financed, own and operate more than 60 megawatts across five countries. And I think the, the, the more exciting part of that, and you know, specifically what you mentioned, it's very topical, we have an additional 190 megawatts that we've contracted in the last 12 months. Um, so wow. there's a significant growth for us as a business, us as a sector, and obviously driven by, I don't want to say ESCOM's inefficiencies, but load shedding, the price of energy, uh, global prices on fossil fuels, etc. Yeah, listen, it's, it's a very interesting time that we're living in, you know, where you get those alternative energies um, that when you look at globally what's been happening in, in Europe, for example, uh, you know, some parts of Asia and the USA, you know, people are looking at alternatives to the traditional ways of generating energy, you know, and uh, uh, when you mentioned um, uh, solar was where you started in, in, in typical, typical residential areas, have you guys moved on to things like uh, wind turbines as well, or have you only stuck to solar? So, Solar Africa's speciality relies around solar, it's, it's in the name. Um, okay. Essentially, when I say we've, we've now offered a full suite of solutions, it's gone beyond just solar rooftop, right? Okay. So, you know, solar rooftop, which is a grid-tied solution, we weren't originally offering batteries in the early stages due to the economics of it. Uh, we now have a, 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 what they call a BES solution, which is the battery energy storage systems. So, we now offer that to the market. Um, we've got wheeling and trading, um, which is your larger utility-scale uh, generation. Um, we, we do the full services in terms of carbon credits and renewable energy certificates. And then on the, on the, on the outer scope, um, we're looking at, we've got a, a biogas business that's, that's integrated, you know, and we also then offer gas to power solutions. And this is probably in the early stages, so it's more future markets than anything else. Yes. Um, no, so, so wind is definitely not on our, ra our specific radar, um, okay. being, being so. No, I'm just, I'm just interested, but, you know, it makes, it, it makes sense that, you know, in South Africa, we've got an abundance of sun, you know, so might as well take advantage of it. And I guess, you know, when you look at the, the, the power problems that we're experiencing, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a business problem, and it's a big business problem, uh, and businesses need that continuity. You know, you, you know, you have a power disruption for four hours in a day. It, it causes serious problems to your, your cash flow, your production, wherever it might be. Now, what is the biggest problem that you are solving for businesses right now? Um, I think it, it, we've, it's a bit of a three-pronged approach, um, being sustainability, being power security, and cost savings or cost reductions. Um, and, and each client is on a different journey 
Um, you know, your large multinationals are pushing the sustainability angles. Um, they're not necessarily subject to load shedding as, 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 as you know, potentially their neighbours um, due to their size of their connections. So, you know, each element or each customer is wanting something else. But if effectively, our solutions uh, are able to tick the sustainability boxes um, from, a, from a, a carbon neutrality perspective and, and solar being a, a clean energy. Um, then on the power security side of things, our, our battery energy storage systems, you know, again, designed around specific needs for a client, whether it be, you know, just load shedding uh, protection, you know, so a, a, a battery storage system that can take me to two, three hours of load shedding, mm -hmm. um, all the way through to demand management, power quality, um, you know, we can go even beyond that and saying, you know, to meet our sustainability goals, we need to be able to store more of our own energy that we produce to, to use at night. So there's, there's that element to it as well. And then from the, from the cost savings perspective, you know, solar power is definitely the cheapest form of energy that you're going to get in South Africa, um, be it if you buy that yourself or if you go for a, a finance solution such as a PPA. Um, you know, so the intention there is to, to reduce... Uh, their OPEX from day one, you know. Okay. Uh, I just, we kind of offer both a CapEx solution, you know, where customers want to own and operate those assets themselves. That's linked to performance guarantees and, and operations and maintenance agreements. And then, you know, if you go for the full service and saying, I don't have the money today and I want the headache today, you know, I want you guys to come in, own, own the solution, and I just want to buy power from you, but I want to do it in a clean manner and I want to do it at a significant saving to what I'm currently paying either ESCOM or, or the municipality. Okay, well that makes uh, that makes complete sense. You know, it's incredible to see how the battery technology has uh, has evolved over the last few years. I mean, I, I've got solar at home and I'm using lithium ion batteries and I must say I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the batteries and it's probably, well, not probably, but it is the best option right now when you look at price and you look at, you put it all into the mix, right? So when you look at battery storage um, becoming that viable option for businesses in the wake of these, you know, increased global inflation, you know, rising electricity costs, talk to us about uh, the storage of, you know, of energy in, into these batteries. Yeah, it's, uh, it is very topical. Um, and again, it's very, very application specific. You know, in some instances, it's a, it's a no-brainer. And then in other instances, you may be one or two years away from it being, you know, financially viable from, from day one. Um, but the, the, call it the life cycle or the, or the um, evolution of the battery, you know, if we go back to kind of 2011 when we started the business, we, we were focused on off-grid solutions. So we've cut our teeth on, you know, the early days of batteries and being the primary provider of power on site. Um, and those days it was lead acid. That's all we had available, you know? um, Highly uh, exposed to temperature ranges, you know, so mm. the data sheet would say it would last five years, 12 months later, your, your battery is dead, right? And that's extremely capital intensive. Um, you know, over the years, as the market has, has changed, lithium iron is definitely for us the most bankable solution to date. Um, the market was pushing life cycle costs, are saying oh, the batteries are going to last 10 or 15 years, and therefore over 15 years is cheaper. It's got to that point where it's actually cheaper today, right? Um, and we don't have to, 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 to bank on 15-year technology. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a critical tipping point to say, mm -hmm. I don't have to take a 15-year outlook and take risk on this. You know, within two, three years, these batteries have paid themselves off, and I still have upside of another seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years of lifespan. Um, you know, where typically, you know, when the, the lithium prices were, were through the roof um, and, and the, there wasn't such a big market for it, you know, you would get a seven, eight, nine year payback, which is very much kind of end of life for, for batteries kind of five years ago. Um, so, no, technology has definitely spurred that on. Uh, you know, the market requirements, uh, supply versus demand, kind of, you know, we've seen battery prices reduce. We see a lot more suppliers of batteries in the market. Um, technology, in terms of uh, the ability of those batteries, have, have definitely increased. And a lot of this is also driven from the EV market, so a lot of, a lot of lessons being learned there. Um, no, I think today in South Africa's environment and what battery energy storage can, can offer, I mean, everybody's subject to load shedding at the moment, right? I think if yes, we had yes. a crystal ball, 
well, I think we did have a crystal ball uh, 10 years, 15 years ago when everyone said this was coming. We just didn't action anything. Um, yeah. I think, you know, we should have been preparing ourselves for this. Um, again, application specific, um, but, you know, depending on what tariff structure you're on and your, the way you consume energy um, would generally be on, on how we size these systems. Um, but I think it's, it becomes a no-brainer from a financial perspective. And the biggest driver there is downtime. You know, so we yeah, focus yeah. heavily on uh, commercial industrial markets, you know, and, and what's great about it is these guys actually have data to say a minute of downtime costs me X, you know. Yeah. Um, we, can't, we can't process, we can't this. And never mind process, it's, it's, our process is stopped. We've got to undo, we've got to redo the robots. It's loss of material. It's, so from an economic standpoint, it's, it's definitely there. If you start to bring in the global fossil fuel prices, if you start to bring in the global inflation, um, ESCOM has asked for 32% for increases here. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get it. Um, I kind of think their tactic is, is to use a 3x multiply and, and hope to get a 10 to 12%, which I think they, they, they'll get. But, you know, 12% on our, on our current cost of, of energy is a lot of money. Um, you know, and as you've mentioned, we have the solar resources. So, you know, we need to, we need to, we need to leverage that up. Um, and solar is the cheapest form of energy. So it, it's, it's making more sense um, day on day. Um, and again, you know, application specific. Yeah, no, look, um, what you're saying makes perfect sense. And when, especially when you start putting the numbers in, um, you know, it, it's just a no brainer because it's there in black and white. But uh, the, the, the most expensive part of a, of a solar installation, as uh, you've been highlighting, are the batteries. And the batteries can be quite costly, but over time, you know, you get your money back. But you've got to lay out the money up front, right? And uh, especially when you've got a big commercial, uh, you know, property that you're doing or you've got a big business, whatever it might be, you know, once you start adding, you know, 20 lithium-ion batteries and you want uh, X amount of kilowatt hours, it starts becoming expensive. So... What, what, what are the finance options available for battery storage? Yeah, Aki, you're very much correct. Um, you know, we've, we definitely in the early days were only pushing the, off the, the grid tied solutions um, because of, of, of the heavy capex side of things there. Um, and today it's got to the point where economics on, on the projects make sense and we can offer finance solutions that still provide savings on day one. Um, so we do, we offer an outright purchase, which is a, I mean, essentially a cash purchase um, with performance guarantees and uptimes. Um, but for those customers who do, don't necessarily want to outlay that capital, we have a fixed lease option, um, and that will range anything from a five to a 10 year tenor, um, you know, and, it, and it's got its fixed escalations, which, which are obviously negotiable depending on, you know, the client's credit, et cetera. Um, I think the, the key takeaway from the financed option is the, the associated risk with owning the battery. You know, so on all of our finance options, be it batteries or solar, you know, we maintain that system, we ensure that system, we, we replace parts when we need to replace parts. Um, effectively, we give performance guarantees and uptime guarantees. You know, so you are paying a slight premium simply because of the finance element to it, but you know you're getting your service. Right? So when it fails yes. on a day or whatever may happen, you, know, you, don't, you don't cover that risk. And, and, and essentially, the, the guys in the commercial industrial space, they don't want to take that risk. You know, they want to deploy their capital in a new manufacturing line, in a new building, or whatever it may be. Um, and that's where we're seeing the, the benefit. Um, I think also as part of that, 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 those, those funded solutions um, is how we operate that battery. Right? So how do we maximize the client savings? Because there's, not, there's more than one revenue stream. It's the reduced downtime, right? So you've got to ensure that your battery is full when, when, when we know that load shedding is coming, right? So mm -hmm. that's all, all, all done automatically. Um, you know, you are on a time of use tariff structure where you're paying seven rand in the evening, but you're paying one rand fifty at two o'clock in the morning, right? So right. let's use that battery to store that one rand fifty energy and sell it when you should be buying seven rand energy. Um, yes, yes. You know, demand quality power and, and this is the kind of things that that we, we continuously work with our clients to understand their needs and how we operate these batteries so it's not necessarily just the capital outlay but it's the it's the operation of those batteries which effectively will give you the return on that capital outlay 
Yeah, so actually your whatever you're paying monthly is actually working for you immediately. You, you'll be able to see it. Those options that you mentioned, are they uh, lease to buy options or is it just outright leases? Uh, it is a lease to buy option essentially. Okay. Um, so the owner will will transfer at the end of end of that uh, of that period. There are buyout okay. options within that period as well. Um, so from a contractual play, uh, perspective, we are quite flexible. Um, you know, we we understand that these are long tenors. Clients sell buildings, they move. You know, um, so now we've allowed for for buyout options and transfer of contracts as well. And then obviously okay. post that. There's an option to procure the system at effectively one rand or zero rand, or continue on, on, on a similar contract. Okay, great. Where do people find more in, information about these business solutions that we've been talking about? If I'm a business, I'm watching this, I'm thinking, I need to speak to David McDonald and I need to speak to the guys at Solar Africa. How do they engage with you? Um, well, firstly, I mean, the, the guys can pick up the telephone and, and, and give us a ring, uh, but I think the best would be is to, to visit our website. Uh, we do have a contact form on that website. It does you, it requires a little bit of information so that, you know, when we're calling you back, we're able to position a correct salesperson, understand your, your business needs. Um, and essentially, our, our sales cycle, our sales process would be to engage with the customer, uh, collect data, understand that, present a desktop uh, proposal, um, you know, and, and work with the customer to, to try and refine that. Um, and as and when they are, they are interested, you know, we will go to site uh, and then we'll do the, the full engineering from there. Um, but yeah, for, from a, find out more information, definitely visit our webpage. There's info on, on all of our products, on our funded solutions, on our green energy journey, um, and, and, and the contact form is the best way to get hold of us. That's solarafrica.com. David McDonald, co-founder and chief executive officer at Solar Africa, thank you so much for joining us on What's Next. And uh, good luck. I mean, uh, it's, it's exciting times ahead. The market is uh, now seeing the benefits of storing energy and creating energy using solar. Uh, and, and businesses need to look at it more seriously in terms of uh, the cost benefits and the, and the value that it's going to add to your organization. David, thank you for joining us. Thanks very much for the opportunity, Aki. All the best.